and the, and the crazy thing about it is, right, so if you run a, a, a general dentist campaign and you look at your searches that you're triggering, you know, you'll get a lot of just general dentists near me, but you also get all these other ones. On the implant side, if you go set up an implant game and you campaign, you target a bunch of keywords, or, you know, your dental implant keywords, your searches will actually look great. But when I bought my car, I did research for months. I watched every YouTube video out there comparing this model to this model, comparing this brand to this brand. Um, and then obviously, once you do that, finding the right dealer, right? Who's going to give me the best price and the best service? Um, but that can go on three, six, nine, 12 months, right? So understanding that it's going to be a bit of a journey. You have to bring these patients through that journey. episode of Full Arch Advantage podcast where we talk about all the technical things you need to do to be successful and having more full arch is coming into your offices and we really really dive into the weeds and today you're going to enjoy this episode because I get somebody to I get to talk to somebody today who I work with closely on a daily basis it's Jack and he is a director of marketing and does an amazing job delivering new patients to all of our clients and he's going to dive into the weeds of what he does to actually provide success. So thanks so much for coming on today, Jack. All right, Jack. So why don't you tell me about some of the misconceptions that are out there about attracting more full arch cases to offices? Yeah. So I think the f there's a couple, right? There, there's, there's quite a handful. Um, and I think one of the biggest areas that we see just really just miscommunication or just, you know, a miss as far as what's needed is thinking that, you know, you've built a successful GP practice or you've done marketing one way and that that is how it's going to be for full arch. Not realizing that, you know, the average treatment around for these GP patients is anywhere from three, four, five hundred dollars up to like a thousand, twelve hundred dollars. Whereas on the full arch side, you're starting maybe be on the low side, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars And so yeah. your marketing for those patients is going to be dramatically different. And what you did to attract the GP patients is not going to work for these full arch patients. Um, and yeah, I can totally see, I can totally see that because it's a big dollar difference, right? So there's massive difference. It's like almost like selling shoes compared to selling a car. Exactly. You're yep. just, they're not, it's not the same. It's not the same. Sorry to disrupt the show, but I just have a quick commercial for you. We are going to be hosting four events over the next 12 months, and we're doing a little bit of everything for everybody. We have something around full art. We have something for those that manage marketing. We have something for those that want to scale their practice at Dykema. And then also we have something next year that's for everybody in your practice to learn business skills and to really really maximize the opportunities for you to grow your offices. You're not going to want to miss these. Visit smcnational.com forward slash events. These are going to be the premier events that you're going to want to go to to make sure that you're getting the tactical skills that you need to continue to grow the way that you want. Because at SMC, we're all about growing. Buying cycle. And so that makes a lot of sense for GP. What about for doctors who are doing full arch yeah. and they're getting tons of doctor referrals, but they haven't dove into like the internet marketing side of things. What, what, what are some of the misconceptions for that? Yeah, so, so that's a really good question as well, right? So obviously, if you're a GP practice making a transition, it's super different. But if you're already doing it, right, and so you have your internal systems taken care of to be able to, to support, you know, doing more arches a month, um, a lot of the misconceptions or, or the mistakes these doctors make is, well, I'm just going to go find a marketing company, right, that, that is just going to get me a bunch of traffic, right? And they're not actually looking for a marketing partner that actually knows how to market specifically for full, full arch. I think recently I just saw uh, in, in, you know, one of our clients trying to get poached by a non-dental marketing uh, practice. And this practice is just doing GP. And the email thread that I saw was, hey, uh, I did some keyword research and it looks like your area gets tons of searches for dental implants. We should start going after that, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and so yeah, th there's a lot of searches. That's a lot of people don't realize yes. that one of the top keywords in dentistry is dental implants. Yep. It's right. It rivals with dental in dentists. Yeah, it actually, If and, and the crazy thing about it is, right? So if you run a, a, a general dentist campaign and you look at your searches that you're triggering, you know, you'll get a lot of just general dentists near me, but you also get all these other ones. On the implant side, if you go set up an implant game and you campaign, you target a bunch of keywords or, you know, your dental implant keywords, your searches will actually look great. You'll get a lot of people that searching dental implant prices, dental implant near me, right? And so from a marketing standpoint, it looks great. Um, and so that's one of the problems, right? You'll get these marketers 
um, that don't understand dentistry and full arch, and they'll actually just try to do a, a bunch of PPC, right? Where you're spending $15 a click, $20 a click, wasting up these practices budget. And a lot of these people, because we just talked about a lot of the searches are dental implants, dental implants near me. But what they don't understand is a lot of these people are top of the funnel, right? So these are people who are just starting out their, um, their research. And so they're actually not ready to go. Whereas if someone searches dentist near me, they can make a decision today to go to your office and accept treatment. Whereas that's not going to happen with someone spending $15,000. Yeah. So, so what I hear you saying is, is that the buying, because the buying cycles are so radically different, how you attract people is going to change. So in GP, what I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So in GP, you have patients who are hopping online and in five minutes, three minutes, they're making a decision of what dentist they're going to where in dental implants, when people are hitting Google and typing in what are dental implants or should I get dental implants or how much are dental implants? they're really at the beginning of their journey and it might be a long time before they actually come in. So if you try to use the same approach uh, for GP that you do for full arch, it's just not going to work because the buying cycle is so much different. So then how do I, if I can't attract the patients through, you know, that normal channel of just running ads and SEO and things like that, how am I going to get more patients from, from online if I can't use those methods? Yeah. So it's, it's all about, uh, just under, first of all, it's understanding that buying cycle that we just talked about, knowing that a GP patient is, is their buying cycle, you know, that happens in a week, they wake up with tooth pain, they can take care of it that day, they have the money for it, you know, uh, for the most part, and they can just go, they, there's not like any big decision they need to make They're like, ouch, this hurts, yeah. it's gonna cost me. So it's a week for everything. Yes. It's a week for the search, everything. going into the dentist, getting the thing paid, getting their bill paid, everything's done. In Absolutely. Week. Whereas on the flip side, on the full arch side, you have these patients that if you're just hitting them at the beginning, they may be looking for the next couple of years, right? I mean, uh, that, uh, the, the easiest way I like to pitch this to doctors is, I mean, think about your, you know, most people's decision to buy a car, right? Uh, when, when I bought my car, I did research for months. I watched every YouTube video out there comparing this model to this model, comparing this brand to this brand. Um, and then obviously, once you do that, finding the right dealer, right? Who's going to give me the best price and the best service? Um, but that can go on three, six, nine, 12 months, right? So understanding that it's going to be a bit of a journey and you have to bring these patients through that journey. So you have to be able to have the assets and have the resources and campaigns that touch patients, not only at each and every part of this journey, uh, this, this, uh, this buying cycle, but that also walks them through it. And then additionally, um, one thing that a lot of implant marketing and implant campaigns can do is you can actually drum up a lot of leads, just form leads, survey leads really quickly. But the problem is a lot of practices and, the, and another mistake they make is they expect those patients and those leads that they're getting to all convert. And if they don't answer the first phone call, uh, that's it. I guess they I guess they didn't. They weren't serious. Right. I guess this patient was just a shopper, not realizing that all of these patients reaching out to you are going to be these shoppers. Um, and so you have to put the work in. To be able to yeah who buys a house who buys a house or a car without no, shopping right? everybody Nobody. right everyone's shopping they want to make sure that it's a big life decision right this is a major purchase i think you know anything over a thousand two thousand dollars is considered a major life purchase and uh consumers right if we just want to really talk about consumers as a whole they're they're going to do their research when they're making a, a major life purchase um and so it's making sure that you're able to be there for that patient educate them um and be there throughout this cycle that they're having, right? Maybe you'll get a patient, you'll reach out to them, you'll get them on the phone, right? You'll have that conversation, but they're ready. They're not ready for the down payment. So you may need to be able to yeah. follow up with them in three months when they're ready. So let's, so let's talk, let's talk through that because I think this is a really good point. So, so, so far what we've covered just for the audience listening is that first of all, you have to know where to go to attract people, right? So you can't just go to Google and just run ads like normal. And so, well, actually, let's touch yeah. on that first. So where do I run out? Yeah, so specifically, and, and where we, we put a lot of our focus is on the social side. So you're doing a lot of um, display ads, video ads, right? Uh, kind of explaining, because also with dental implants, there's a lot more education that needs to go into it. So people just yeah. think everything yeah. is an implant, right? If you have missing teeth. There's also trust. Trust, is, <laughs> trust and education go hand in hand. Because if I'm just getting my teeth clean and you have good Google reviews, then That's I'm going to go there. Right? But if but if I'm buying implants, 
there's a lot that I don't understand. And then I have to trust you because I'm going to buy from you and spend a lot of yeah, money. Exactly. So how does that work on social media? Yeah. So like what, what do you so exactly? You just doing? hit the nail on the head, right? When it comes to GP and if I'm just getting my teeth clean, I'm looking at the reviews, right? And that, that pretty much does it, right? It's not really invasive. It's not even a surgery, right? They're just cleaning my teeth and I can trust those Google reviews. Actually, what we've seen on the, on the implant side is people don't actually care too much about your written reviews and your number and your star. I've seen practices killing it when it comes to full arch marketing with like, 19 reviews, four stars on Google, right? Because patients, they want to see a little bit more. They, they, it, it's, it's, it's more cosmetic and functional at surgery. So they're going on your website. They're looking for testimonials of patients that have actually done it. They're looking for your before and afters, right? So that's why it just works so perfectly on social media um, because you can follow these people. Hey, first of all, you can show them. You can show them your process. You can educate them mm -hmm. from A to Z, what your different option are, uh, options are, what it's going to cost. Um, you know, how long it can take, you can do that. So while you're educating them now, like you said, you're also building trust because you're now positioning yourself as the expert because all these questions you have about full arch and implants, I'm answering them for you. Um, and then beyond that. So are you, are you, are you qualifying people through these videos based on like location and income or how are you, how are you pre-qualifying who these ads? Yeah. Are? So you start with, if you do a lot of this marketing, you can have like a built up audience, right? Just to the search engine starts to know who converts, who doesn't. But some of the best tricks we've seen is targeting people in the higher income areas, right? And every practice is different and everyone has their different models. And so, you know, it's different market by market, practice by practice. But a lot of times you want to focus on the people that have a higher, uh, you know, amount of discretionary income. And so you're doing some, you know, some, uh, you know, socioeconomic um, it, census track targeting where you're looking at where are these high income people living. You're targeting there. Then you're showing them these videos. If they show interest, you kind of- Is it age too? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah we're not going to be targeting an 18-year-old for full arch. So we're making show- Yeah, so what, what's the cutoff like that you see? I know it's, it's different, different but right? it's like 50, But 60. if we're talking full arch, typically we, it's 50 plus. 55 plus, typically somewhere in that range um, is where you want to start your targeting uh, to make sure that you're not, you know, like I said, targeting 22 year olds. And income's large. different everywhere. Cause I've looked at like income. It's like one market high income is like 60,000. Like, yeah, market, exactly. Another marketing, another, that's... another market, a high income is 120, 150. So it, it really depends on what part of the country you're in when it comes to. Income, exactly. Right? Yeah. You're, you're going to want to look at your, and not even just your state. You want to look at your, your city, kind of your specific region that your practice is in when setting up your kind of income targeting there. Got it. Okay. So now, so, so let's assume that I have a, either a GP practice, I want to add full arch, or I'm a doctor who has, you know, I've been doing full arch for years. I totally get it. And I know how to do the treatment, but I've largely relied on referrals, doctor referrals, patient referrals. And now I'm looking to add this. I understand that, okay, I can't just go to Google and just go run ads. I'm going to need to build out some kind of video ads and build trust and learn how to target people properly on there, then there's going to come. So where we were at was like, they're going to get all these leads yep. and everybody always talks about this. I've gotten hundreds yep. of leads and no one showed up. What? And I know you have some numbers around this, which I think are pretty interesting as far as for every doll, every $5,000 that you put into marketing, you're getting a certain, you have to have a certain amount of time that you're investing into lead nurturing. How, how does that work and what does that look like from the office? Yeah, side? so so like we, we started to touch on it earlier, uh, so glad we circled back here. But basically, you're going to get a lot of leads. And I, I, you hit the nail on the head. And we've heard so many practice sales uh, come to us, right? And they say, I, well, I can get tons of leads, but it's just I, I'm not getting anyone scheduled, right? Or I'm not getting people to show. I'm not getting any consultations through the door uh, from my leads. Um, and a lot of the reason is um, <clears throat> they don't have a system to be able to properly track, monitor, follow up with these. And then they also don't have the process. So they don't have both, right? So you're getting hundreds of leads per month for your practice. And you're hoping that you can follow up with them and track them and stay on top of them organized, you know, very or in a very organized manner, just out of your email inbox. Or maybe on, you know, even if, if you have a little bit of technical know-how, you get them all to funnel into a spreadsheet. Um, and you're hoping you can stay on top of them with that. Um, but once, you know, maybe your first 10, 20, 30, you can do that. But as that list gets longer and longer and as time goes on, you're going to start forgetting about people and missing conversations that where people were or missing leads where people were really interested. It just wasn't maybe the right time. Um, and so, yeah, we've done some math. And basically for every for every roughly five thousand dollars you spend, um, you're going to need roughly one to two hours per day of someone just dedicated following up 
um, on these leads. And it's not just, okay, well, I have the time and I have the budget. Great. I have someone and they, ha- they have the two hours a day they can do this. Well, beyond that, you need a system and you need a process. Yeah. So you need, you know, some type of CRM to be able to funnel these leads into that keeps you organized, right? So you need that. And then on top of that, you need a process to make sure that you're not just getting all these leads into the CRM and you're doing the same thing as having them in a spreadsheet, yeah. right? Well, the biggest, the biggest struggle that I see at dental offices right now, the number one problem, if you ask everybody in dental, it's not new patients, it's not new patient leads, it's I don't have enough manpower to support the growth that I want to mm-hmm. do. And then when you throw on top of that, like, hey, and two more hours a day, whoever's yes. doing it, assume you have yeah. a system for it. That, that's where most people that I've seen, that they, they, it just fails, like it falls apart. And then what happens is, is now you have a bad taste about mm-hmm. marketing because it's like, all I get is all these leads and I don't get any kind of patients coming through the door and you're not going no. to, you're never going to from that, from that approach. There's nobody who's just going to call your office and say, I want full arch. And, and I think the reason that people get confused about this is because when you work with referrals from doctors, they are coming in and saying, Hey, let's get yep. started. Let's go. And the reason why is somebody else has educated them on the process. The, the GP office that's referring them over is saying, hey, you need this. You should really consider this. This is going to help you out. Let me refer you to somebody who yeah. knows about this. So they're already have, they've been educated. There's the trust. Their brain's been uh, expanded to be able to understand it. And so it, it's a much easier process. But then when you go to the marketing patients, there's that whole front end of all that trust, salesmanship, all those things have to be interjected. And then then you go into the process and it's like if you're just storing leads in your email <laughs> or just storing leads in 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 your in your phone calls and you're just hoping yeah. that these people show up that's where things really fall apart. Yeah, absolutely. I, you hit the nail on the head. It, it there's a lot of different caveats to it. I mean, you have the maybe even they had a campaign where they got a couple phone calls, so they just assume that that is how it's going to be forever, not knowing that those patients did all that research already and someone else educated them. And uh, neglecting the fact that there's a whole other demographic and group of patients that are on that journey and doing that research for full large. And you can go, you can go find them, you can go capture them and you can be the one that's nurturing them. And by doing that and having an organized campaign to do that. And then when they reach out, having an organized system and process to keep that conversation going, knowing that even though they went through that two months of research, then contacted you, they still may not be ready to go. So you may need to stay with this patient for another three, six months until they're ready to schedule and and uh, actually accept treatment and start. And so it is just making sure that you have those systems in place. It's really just organizational. Just as we talk through it, it's really making sure that you have an organized system for this patient journey um, and knowing it's a different patient journey for these full arch patients instead of, you know, rather than your referral patients or GP patients. Got it. Okay. Um, last question for you. And we just have a couple more moments. Um, where should I be targeting as far as like cost per start. So if I'm, if I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say, Hey, I want to get someone to come into my practice and buy treatment from me cost per start. What, where, sh- what's the ranges that I should be think targeting and, and really honing. Yeah, it's a great question. So like I said, it's going to differ by market. You know, if you in a different region, right. You may be the only practice we've seen offering full arch in a 30, 40 mile radius. So you have a massive advantage. You can have a lower cost per start. Mm-hmm. Or you may be in Southern California, New York, where every Super practice is doing it. And so you have to do a lot more things to stand out and your cost is going to be a little bit higher. But we've seen on the low side and just some really optimized campaigns where we have all these, these systems that we've talked about in place. We can see it anywhere from you know, the low side of 1250 to 1500 And then on a recurring basis, the high side, anywhere from 2250 up to like 2750 uh, But that's very consistent. That's month over month where you're doing, you know, 10, 20, 30 starts a month at those ranges. And it's really easy to scale and keep going. Yeah, I love that. And then the thing that I think to call out here is that the cost per star is not a marketing yeah, only number. It's a marketing plus operations plus clinical yep. plus treatment presentation. Like it's the whole system that you have from end to end working together to get to yep. that final number. Cause you can have amazing oh, yeah. marketing and nobody answers the phones. It doesn't really matter. Or you can have horrible marketing, but really good front desk and really good treatment coordinator. And you can actually get yep. a couple starts out of it. So the, it's getting everything to work together to get that number to perform for you. So really great stuff. All right. Last question. Um, you have everyone in the dental implant industry, the full arch industry, 
they're in a stadium, you're up on a stage, you have one message to share with them about what you're an expert in, what would that one message Ooh, be? That's a great question. And it's, 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 it's a tough one. Uh, I, I don't like to see myself as the expert. Only one. You can only pick one. One, one message that, hey, this is what you guys need to be focusing mm, on. What to focus on. Really, it's just taking care of your patients. You know, once they become a lead and you've, they've given you their contact information, um, you know, they took that step. You know, they, they did their research and whatever marketing you did, you got them, you convinced them to pick you as their next step in their journey. And so treating every single patient that does that, that reaches out whether a phone call, whether a form, mm. whether a survey, right? Treating them as they're already one of your patients that's walking through your door, yeah. taking care of them. And if you start to do yeah. that, then your marketing and your full large campaigns are gonna work so much uh, more seamlessly because you're just gonna get these patients that that come in through the door and they love you, right? That you're, they're not feeling that yeah. you're treating them as just another dollar sign, it's just as another opportunity. You're treating them as a patient that you're gonna take care of and change their life. That's a huge mind shift. So yeah, going from, hey, anybody who walks into the building is a patient rather than doing that saying, hey, anybody who contacts mm -hmm. us is a potential patient and treating them as such. That's huge. Well, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your expertise. I learned a lot and uh, I think it'll be very helpful to the community and everybody. Yeah, listening. thanks for having me.